back everyone. Today's video we're going to show you how to use the latex and how to make a mother mold. I hope you've all seen the last video which introduced all the different surfaces you can apply the latex to. I'll show you what latex I've been using. It's in a very large container. This is 20 litres, you can buy it in a one litre container. I've just used one of my oxide powder containers. This is in a white container so there's no light can get in. It shouldn't be in this container because light can get in but I do hide this under something. I'll just give you a quick look inside. It goes slightly pink. One of the most important things to remember with latex is to keep it out of the light. All of mine are in a dark shed and then put into plastic tubs. There is a possibility that they can go gooey if they touch gooey meaning that they'll go soft and liquefy if they touch metal and light will make them shred and possibly delaminate so that the layers will become undone. And I'd like to show you a 30 year old mold been in the shed. It was an angel I used on the cemetery job. So 30 years it can still keep its shape. I only found one problem with it and I'd like to show you how easy it is to fix a problem like that. It was um, this chair here. We'll just put a little bit of latex in there and do that about three or four times and it'll be like self-healing glue. So latex on latex fixes uh, weak areas or little breaks like that. And so don't worry about it if you if you have a little tear, it's of no, no issue at all. The other thing is, I've often just used the masking tape. Masking tape is really useful for using with latex. This one here, which I've just done to explain that you actually need to extend it into a flange here. So this is where it ends, that's, that's as far as you want it to go. But by giving yourself some extra, when we pull this off like that, this will help when you are vibrating it that it just doesn't spill all out of the edge. It's really nice, it just keeps it a tidier job. If you haven't got an edge or a flange, you can easily create one with the masking tape. You just do, do multiple layers. Now, as you come to the end of what I usually say is 10 layers, 10 layers will is exactly what this one is. It, it's a good thickness, but I've made a big mistake on this one, for example. I went too thick. I thought originally I'd just have it self-supporting here, but what I've done is I've gone ridiculously thick here and when I try to pull out the delicate horns they snap over and over again. So there's a point where something light like this really probably only requires five layers and it doesn't mean you need a big support system. The lighter the amount of cement you're going to pour the less of a support system you need. But you do become aware that your mother mold becomes the problem. It's very easy to do a latex mold. It's very easy to brush this on ten times. If it's a hot day, you'd be able to do two layers in a day, cold day about a, one layer. So imagine this is over here. I've come to 10 layers. You have to start thinking of supporting it in the mother mold. And to keep it simple, I just wanted to do a one part mother mold. The problem was that it actually has an underbite and cuts in here. So because it goes in, it means I would never be able to pull this out of there in one piece. It means it would require a two-piece mother mold and if it was two-piece and went right down the middle of a nose we might have a bulging nose so you just don't really want to have a connection in the middle of her face. So I didn't want to do it that way, I wanted a one part and to make that possible I loaded up the sides here with some waste latex, some grubby old latex, you can see it. What that has done is it's made it a one-piece mother mold not a two-piece. What that means is that that won't come in here, grip it tight and we'll never get it off. So big difference so you can build it up and you must start thinking towards the end of your latexing how the heck am I going to make a mother mold and how will I support it. So this one's ready to pull this what I would call now a latex sleeve. Before I'm going to pull this off we really need to decide how it's going to be supported to stop it uh, bulging stretching and deforming the lovely lady under here. So we won't pull it off before we've done a mother mold and I'll be doing that for you in a few minutes. At the moment we've got my scary otter. Kids always called it a scary otter, they were petrified of him. I really want to capture in here, I've done about six layers already, I've got another couple to go. I couldn't do this part here because the tongue was in the way but I've just had enough room there. Get a nice little bit of latex on there. I'll put one more layer on and then I'll be able to pull it off. And this I want to make into a chihuahua's jaw. You'll notice with any of these jaws they're pretty much the same top and bottom and 
close enough anyway. This has gone quite old at the bottom of this container. It's ready to get some of the big container poured in. This is what will happen. You'll get some skin coming in. The brush will be buggered. Uh, there's still some good stuff in there, so we won't bother with that. If I was going to do the first coat, I would always use a new brush, but thereafter, it doesn't matter what state the brush is in. Get rid of the old stuff. Essentially, she can get some more honor there, supporter there. The further you go with the layers, the worse the latex can be. It's all lumpy and sort of not good, but the first layer must be lovely. You have to make sure that you're ornament whatever you're using for your original from your original is clean and free of dust I don't use a release mold I don't do any of that I just go straight on but it's got to have a nice clean brush what I'm going to do here is just show you that you can also get quite delicate here I'm going to go right up to the edge there because latex comes off really easily on your skin it just wipes off and basically dries almost immediately if you drop a big puddle on the wood, it just wipes off when it's dry, but it wouldn't like anything that uh, is porous, like hair or your upholster on your couch, which I've done. I've got it in my hair, which is not good. I have got it on clothes, which is also not good, but anything that is not soft and porous, it just slides straight off when it's dry. So what you do is you leave that till it's dry and then it would be just great. So I just come up at the studio and I just add the layers Often I have like six, 10 things lined up, so it's not like doing it uh, just for one. Get in there, make sure that the canines have got a good coating on them. The hardest mold to pull through I found is either a lady's fingers with fingernails on or canine teeth on a dog. Both of those are very hard to get out without breaking the tip off. Other than that, latex stretches and is also very gentle and it doesn't hurt, it won't be damaging. So we'll leave that, probably leave it upside down, but if it's just gonna be fine. That'll be ready to pull very shortly. So sometimes you'll want to do a latex mold and you'll be upset to find that there is some metal in it. Uh, like this has got this little old ashtray, a little bit of taxidermy. Now I still wanted to make a mold of it because I thought he was awfully cute and I'm glad I did. It's as simple as getting your masking tape. Basically, I just got in there and covered up more carefully than I'm doing now, the whole thing. I mean the whole amount of the metal. Got to eliminate the metal. I did numerous layers. I got it really neat, got it right to the edge. And all you're doing is hiding the metal from the latex because it doesn't like it. So do a good job of that. And then I just latexed it all over and forgot it was metal. The other one that I needed to do was this mannequin here. I wanted to give her a reasonable place to land here as a base so she wouldn't it forward but she had metal arms here same thing happened covered it all up with the masking tape better than i'm doing here with one hand and just went i went over the whole thing so that when i latex her i just brought the latex to here and went right over the top of the masking tape masking tape and the latex seems to be very handy together something to remember so the last point on the latex that i'd like to explain to you is this resin parrot a lot of gaps it even has a gap in its mouth there can see that what I got was I got some kids plasticine I just made a fake wall it wasn't very thick I filled in every gap there wall there wall came down to here and I popped a little ball in his mouth and then I could latex the whole thing so you're never going to be able to pull it off like a sleeve if you've got all the latex in the gaps it's just absolutely impossible so fill your gaps before you start. As you can see with this one, it just looks like the woodwork or the bamboo or the foliage or the rocks, whatever. It just looks like nature. That's it for the latex. We'll get onto the mother moles now, which is a little bit more complicated, but a lot of fun. Showing you how to do a plaster mother mold and a expanding foam mother mold, which is a lot of fun. To, uh, you have to keep it nice and calm and controlled, but I'll show you both of those. Before you do that, you need to roughly imagine how many parts your mother mold is going to be. Uh, or ideally, it's one part, which is really easy. And I'm thinking this lady here is a two-parter. We need to divide her around here, there, and I'm gonna slap some plaster on her this side, and then probably let that set. I'll use some Glad Wrap to stop it sticking together when the two bits of plaster meet so we can still butt it up together, get a nice tight fit, and we'll get the second layer of plaster 
and then be a nice tight mother mold that will come apart in two parts and then we can pull her and we'll have her finished. The likes of this big mannequin here, trying to divide it into parts. Uh, one of the main problems with her was that she's quite weighty when she's full of cement and while she has the mother mold made of plaster say and the cement inside of her, to even vibrate her and handle her is going to be quite a mission. Here she is finished. I've just had a bit of a play with some stamps as you can see. She looks good. She's lovely and I managed to make it lighter so I could handle her easier by just using the plaster for her face. The face is always the most important part. You don't want any movement, but if she has a slightly bulging bulge on her skull, that's just nature. So yeah, you can be less careful on the rest of her, but I always try and get the face really good. Here we've got a nice big hunk of plaster. Her face isn't gonna go anywhere once it's in there. And because by the time you've got the cement and that, she's heavy, this is, this is heavy. I came up with a very light, looks like an Eskimo suit, and this is expanding foam. So what she's ended up being is a three-piece mold. Let's sit on the back of it like that now. Fit in nice and then, oh gosh, she's heavy. This comes up here, fits in, get the elastic, get that nice and tight together. And then this piece here will go in her face. So we've got a safe face, the rest of her body did come up nice and clean, but to be quite honest, I don't know if I could have lifted her or vibrated her if the whole thing was plaster. And that's why they do use the expensive resin uh, sheets and the fiberglass mother molds, because they're light, but they're also extremely expensive. Now these cans here of expanding foam, they're on sale for $10 each, and I can still get a trade discount on top of that. So it's not expensive. I can usually do three this size out of one of these cans, a few bucks each. So the process of deciding where the divisions are is avoiding the undercuts. The first part I will decide on is to keep her face whole. That means I will bring the division down here, round that way, not, not this way. That would be the obvious choice. I'll be able to get all of that in one go, as you can see here. What you can't ever get is an undercut. So I can't get this piece here. Again, I could have probably got this all in one go, just like this. So she could have been a two-piece mold, except for the fact that I wanted the plaster to be nice and heavy on her face and support her face really well. Three or two, it doesn't matter. I don't like going over three pieces. Three pieces is about as far as I go. I'll show you a simple one-piece mold. So I've got this little trunk here. It's ideal to set up something else on top, either real taxidermy, faux taxidermy, or whatever I've got. What I've got here is uh, the latex mold, and from this you can see how I've supported the edge with masking tape. It looks really rough, but it'll give me the opportunity to do a good little vibration without it all spilling out. The other thing, this trunk or this little bit of tree here, the original, didn't have a back. It kept on going, and I wanted a flat back. I had to create a back, so I created the whole back from masking tape, rough as it is, and I don't intend for this to be seen particularly. It is just some masking tape. It's not even the wood. So I'll just show you the mother mold. It's simply made of expanding foam. All right, so we've got the latex. But let's just do it simply like this, even though this is reasonably heavy. Uh, it's going to be well supported by this lightweight piece of expanding foam. Absolutely brilliant. It'll be poured like that, vibrated like that, be able to come right to the very edges of these rooty bits here. And you can see I just always do this in a solid brown oxide cement. Makes for a great concrete base for other things. The simplicity of mother moles is wonderful if it is one piece or three piece or two piece. You just have to get your head around where the division is going to be. And the division is that you're going to have to Pull this off in one go not much wiggling this basically is getting bigger here bigger there but if it goes in and out too much it's going to catch unlike the plaster which will go straight onto the latex and i'll show you that in a minute expanding foam i always use glad wrap on the latex before i attach that i'm really afraid that the expanding foam and i think it would so i just make sure it can't by putting the glad wrap over it which I'll show you on the bare bench, it eliminates this sticking and not being able to come off and then that being able to 
come off as well. This is really important, the Glad Wrap, when you're using the expanding foam, but not at all important when you're using the plaster. So we'll go ahead and I'll show you the plaster, mother mold making on this one. And over here we've got this lovely bear bench. I'll get this up on the desk and we shall do him with the expanding foam. I'm just preparing this one for the plaster to do it in two parts and just to help me remember where the division is. Just gonna use the masking tape. It does love the latex. And what I'll be doing is, just to stop it being a sticky mess, I'll be doing it uh, like that. Pretty rough, but it'll just help me when I'm pushing the plaster into it, that I'll know not to overshoot, basically. So I've aimed for her highest points. Everything here is the furthermost. It's very untechnical, very rough, and it's just a guideline. So we're ready for the plaster. If you want to know how to mix plaster properly, you're probably best to go and watch another YouTube video on it, because uh, other than putting the water in first and then the plaster second, if you want to know the exact uh, measurements, ratio of water to plaster, it's all there on other YouTube videos, just watch how to mix plaster. As for me, I'll just put some water in there and you can see this is a very old bowl that I've used for cementing. If I was to be pouring plaster for another reason, I'd use a clean bowl because this is just an outside mother mold. It's only a support, it's not ever going to be seen. The plaster, as I said, is very cheap and it's also very heavy. It won't matter on something this size. Now I'm just going to guess how much plaster I need and I'll probably get it wrong. But the important thing to do is sprinkle it on top and leave it for one minute to soak in. To avoid lumps, you do it much more carefully than this. I don't care about lumps because it's just for a support. You're supposed to sprinkle it. I'm just chucking it in, but either way, use cold water. If you used hot water or warm water, the plaster would go off too quickly. It's already gonna go off really quickly. So just leave it for a little while. I don't know whether that's enough or not. We'll soon find out. All we're going to do is support the latex. Of course, you can go too far with this and end up too thick, but I'm going to have a thick mix. It's not like a pouring mix. It's a plop it on mix, as you'll see. It doesn't need any release mold on the latex. It's not gonna stick. It's going to go in every groove, but it's, um, it's going to pull off very cleanly. The plaster will take about, altogether about 10-15 minutes to harden. The main advantage of the plaster is that it's uh, so cheap and so readily available. That'll be the last amount I put in. I think that that will be about the right consistency. Now, if you're going to pour this, you'd be worried about making air bubbles. You'd be doing it so much more carefully than I am. And there are ways to avoid making this many air bubbles. It's really going to go off now, so I'll be um, plopping it on. It's going to go off really quick. Just plop it on here. And we'll put her on this side. Here. That'll be enough there. And then all I do is I give it a pat. It's going to go off very quickly. I've only got enough time to give it a pat. That masking tape is just giving me something to work with. Otherwise it'd be really wibbly wobbly and all over the place. But it is gonna go off quick to work fast at that point. So you can guess your consistency. It's when you feel the resistance when you're stirring it. Use an old bowl though, because it hardens. It's very hard to get off the bowl, so. Perfect timing, really. There we go. Right, and if I'm quick enough, I'll get the other side on, but quite often it's starting to really go off now. Let's see if I can. I can definitely get a, a second base. 
the masking tape is going to divide it into the two pieces there. Just enough time. Get that there. And there we go, that's a two-piece mold. I can dig that masking tape out a bit there. It's gone a bit fat with gravity. Some more of that onto there. Make sure you can feel your masking tape. That's great. Right, now we don't need to touch that anymore. That's all good. 10, 15 minutes, you've got your mother mold and you can break it open. Right, now I'll show you the expanding foam mother mold and you'll be all set. Uh, so this is my beloved bear bench. It's really beautiful. It's about 1880 Black Forest bear bench from um, the border of Switzerland and Germany. And they've even got a museum of these. So only one man carved it and then his son followed through. So it's a very minimal amount of these bears around. So they're quite rare. Had Edelweiss carved on it. And what happened was you, when you sat on it, it was sprung so that it actually started a music box that's under here that is no longer under here. It's the thing that's missing. And it played Edelweiss. The, the music Edelweiss and everybody fell around laughing in those days because there was no telly. This is a huge novelty, it's very good. I did this latex of this guy's face 10 years ago. I've had a lot of fun doing a lot of moles. This is it straight, this is just brown cement all the way through with the oxide powder. And this is just touching up a bit of black there. Sealed it, comes up lovely. So that's that one. I didn't do him too big this one as far as the length of his neck. I was really just after his face. This is his plaster. Mother mold, it's all very good. Piece of elastic holding it together. Keys in well, latex goes in. Push him in, get his ears in, get his snout in, and pour the cement in. I'll let you see how nice his little snozzle is. His nose is beautiful. Canines there, the under ones there. You've got every little cut that he made with his chisel in the day, endlessly probably in his whole lifetime making bears in the black forest where the bears live. The uh, residue here, before you make another mole, which I haven't done yet, the best thing to do is wipe it off. If you stretch the latex, it comes off really easy. I find that's the best way to do it. If you're gonna wash it, make sure you don't use anything with petroleum in it. And even your dishwashing liquid will probably have a product of petroleum in it. So just use water if you're gonna ever wash them. For storing them for years, I just put a bit of cornstarch. If you dust it with the talcum powder that's 100% cornstarch, no petroleum product again, you will find it will absorb any moisture over the years and it'll just keep it nice. So when I put them away for a long time, tuck them into their mother mold, throw a bit of cornstarch in there, and then they're good to go. This is in 10 years, just pulling it out again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna contrast this bear with a longer neck with the expanding foam. This is already quite heavy, this plaster. When you fill it with the cement, it's even heavier. So this is going to give me a lighter mother mold. So it's a good thing to do as well. I've already done my divisions quite a long time ago and never got round to it. Like this one, it's a three-piece mold. Come around the back here. Again, you're going for the highest point. You're going for the tip of the ears and the very extension of his shoulders there, just to support it. And again, the best support you're going to aim for is the face. And as I said before, the plaster doesn't need it, but we're going to put a piece of lead wrap on every part here. The thought being that we can push it in well. And the expanding foam goes off in about all oh, five minutes. As it goes off, I'm going to give another piece of lead wrap so my hands stay free of the expanding foam. It's very, very hard to get off. And then I can just make sure, like when you do the plaster, that you just push it ever so slightly so it doesn't just set and miss this groove here. So I'll get this other piece of lead wrap. And there's not many recesses. We're just looking for the shape and the support. We're going to set up the bare head for its uh, expanding foam mother mold. This has been shaken before, just give it another couple of shakes. As the instructions say, it has to be done upside down. So here's the trigger. We're just gonna make it like this, stay calm and get it on there. Really no other way of doing this than doing one piece at a time because it's about all you can handle with this much mess. It is a very messy job. Very, very, it's a lot of fun, but we've got gravity working against us. We've got a bit of a slump down here, but we fix that by getting some of this glad wrap under it. And it'll just stay there. It'll just become part of the whole job, but we'll just pull this up 
you really can't touch the damn stuff. It's that sort of stuff, right? So we'll just put that there. It's a, it's a tricky example to be showing you because of the, because of gravity mostly. So I'm really happy with this now. Pushed it hard, got it into the grooves. It's almost set. It was just set enough so I could push it. There's more glad wrap that I would normally use, but it's an awkward one. You will see this completed in the next video. I'll finish the other two parts of the three part mold. We'll do a casting of some of the molds you've seen in the introduction and today. And I'll show you my favorite recipe, my favorite mix. I'll show you the consistency I like for pouring. It's not too thin, it's just right. I'll also show you some of the oxide powders and it's a lot of fun mixing the colors up. So please join me on the next video. Like and subscribe, it would really help me out. Thanks and bye for now.